Hi everyone, good afternoon. My name is Mateus Aguiar de Cordeiro de Garcia. Uh, I have a long last name, I, as you can see, but you just can call me Matthews, Mateus, if you want, no problem. I work as a junior data scientist here at the Center of Customer, in Customer Insights and Digital Marketing. And today I will be presenting the workshop, Create a Great Report Using R Markdown. But before I actually start, this whole presentation, I would like to kindly ask, ask you to open your R, uh, your R studio. Uh, as we mentioned on the flyer, uh, we, you must have this program because you're gonna follow along to create this report with me. And if you didn't have uh, type command yet, I kindly ask you to install the package, tiny tasks, and do this both lines you know, in your command line as well. All right, so let's get started. So uh, what about the learning outcomes for this workshop? So after you all see this whole presentation, you'll be able to do the following. So to describe the R Markdown structure, also to explain the capabilities and the benefits of using R Markdown, compare and contrast, create PDF and its similar reports, you're gonna be able to uh, see the, the difference of creating these bold reports and also, I'm going to show you how to create word reports as well. Uh, create a output he header appropriate for the desired output file type. So we don't have to uh, create different R markdowns to ge generate PDFs or HTML reports in the end. We can set up these both uh, uh, different types of reports. And when you need the button, I'm going to show you how to do it. It's very, very quick, simple, and easy. Uh, also, you're going to be able to uh, explain the R Markdown code structure. So I'm going to show you uh, how the R Markdown its code structure is uh, automatic, automatically set up in R Markdown and how you can easily change it. And let's create the report for the desired file format using R Markdown. Uh, in this specific presentation, I'm not going to show you how to create a, a PowerPoint uh, type of presentation. But uh, the next one, I probably probably will show you how to do it. But this specific workshop is to generate reports, not exactly presentations, all right? So first of all, let's see the difference about R script and R Markdown. You probably, uh, I'm not sure how many of you are uh, get used to use R Markdown or have some experience on using it, but R script, it's pretty much the first thing that you have that you start to type in, in R when you just get the, the first impression of it. So you can ask me, so why we are using R Markdown? Uh, that's no one simple and quick answer. I think it is depend of the activity that you're trying to achieve. So for example, to build a narrative with R script, uh, the comments are added to the script. So you have to put a hashtag for each comment uh, if you want to have multiple lines of comments, you have to have multiple hashtags. Uh, and the report describes the entire analysis drafted separately after this, this script is completed. What does that mean? So when you press, for example, control enter to run the code, it's, uh, it can only run the specific line of code. Uh, and the changes, like the difference in with R Markdown, it is the rich test, it's added, to describe the motivation and the conclusion for each code chunk. So you can put as many comments as you want inside, outside of the code chunk. And when you run your code chunk, and it's gonna run all the code that, that is inside of the code, the code chunk. Uh, so uh, pretty much I don't, I'm not sure if you're familiar with this, these terms that I'm using, but the, I'm showing you what is the code chunk is, what is a comment is, inside of the R Markdown. And I think all is gonna be good in the end. Um, also the activity. So to organizing plots, widgets and tables, to our script, each individual output is sent to a file and collected later into, into a report. For R Markdown, all the output is embedded to a single document. When we create the, the report using R Markdown, when we need the file, all the output is gonna be embedded to one single document. So it's gonna be very uh, simple and easy to see uh, all the image, the plots, the tables that we are uh, 
uh, trying coding inside of Farmer Town, you're gonna have just typing neat or run it, right? And obviously each code chunk uh, belongs to each code that is inside of it. So we can run each one separately, but also when we need it, you can have the, all of the code chunks that you wrote inside your Armor Town file. Also, uh, to create reports, which is pretty much the main difference here, uh, for our script, create a report, it's a very time consuming step because any changes to the reports can be uh, prone to an error. Uh, and since the report is not tied to this code, it's not very reproducible. reproducible. So you cannot exactly uh, generate a lot of reports just using our script. You have to use different types of uh, uh, different types of extensions to generate reports. With R Markdown, everything is so much simple and, and easy. So to render the final report, it's pretty much instant. You, you can have two seconds to generate different types of report. You can generate HTML, PDF, Word files, as I already said. Uh, and the future changes are very easy to implement. So for example, if you create your PDF file to a financial report, for example, and you must update it, you don't have to start from zero because you have the first version. So you pretty much have to update the comments, to update the versions, so update your code, update the image, uh, only that. You don't have to start from zero. So all the setup that you made from the past, it's reprodu reproducible by you and also by the others. The others that can see your, uh, your, your code, your report, can see your comments, can see what you're trying to achieve uh, right into each code chunk. So it is very interesting to use this, this tool inside of RStudio. All right, so I, I said a little bit of what R Markdown is, but let's give it a little bit more focus on what, in what is possible to do with it. So to explain that first, we have to understand the R Markdown structure. So the R Markdown file contains three main structure. So we have the header, as the header, when you pretty much just generate automatic, automatically inside R Markdown, you're gonna have the title and the output. But you also can put your name on it, the author, the date as well. And when you just generate this R Markdown file. And, and also you can create, for example, a table of contents. When you put in the output, the HTML document, you can set the table of contents, you can set the theme, all of this, I'm just giving you guys a little bit of a spoiler here, but you're gonna see with me what I, what I mentioned, all right? So the text, you can see here those has, has, hashtags uh, right, right here, right next to our markdown. This is not a comment here, this is a header. I, I'm already seeing, uh, I'm already telling you because that's the main difference between our script and our um, markdown. And uh, when you, for example, right here, when we, type those two hashtags, you not, not even change the color. So that's not a, a function. That's not something that the, the R Markdown gonna change it. It's gonna be a header, it's not a comment. And all of this text here, that is a comment. Outside of a code chunk, without the hashtags, it's a, uh, the R Markdown already see and understand that this is a comment, all right? And properly the code chunks, everything that is inside of the code chunk especially with this little letter here, R, it's gonna be inter interpreted as R code, all right? So to insert the code chunk, you should only press Control or Command if you're using Mac computers, Alt and I. And the structure is the chunk language, chunk name and chunk options that I'm gonna show you. And to set the chunk options, we, for the, this, those reports, we're, gonna, we're only gonna use the uh, to show output only as the first code chunk, all right? Uh, so I also wanted to say why I create PDF reports? So why is that so important? Because PDFs, they are portable across Windows, Mac OS, Linux, Android, and iOS systems. So once you have this type of uh, file inside your machine, you can send to all of those types of other machines as well, and they can pretty much use it. If, for example, uh, you have your customer use Linux and you send PowerPoint, 
And it's not going to be easy for them to actually to open this file. So PDF can be an easy way to set up this issue. Um, the PDF are very easy to print. So you cannot, for example, uh, just uh, change the PDF without leaving a footprint in the document. So they are easy to print because uh, you can use uh, any type of uh, extension to print your document and they, you cannot change it very quickly and easy. The, that's very good when we are, for example, trying to get uh, a report that you're gonna show to our managers. You don't wanna see any type of changes on thing that you, pre we, you made in the end. And the PDF files can be even secured by password. password. So if you have sensitive information inside your document, you can actually create a password to protect your file, which is a very important thing as well. And just to comment on once again, it's very important to install the, the package tiny text that I put it on the chat for everyone here uh, can be able to generate the PDF report in the end with me. All right. So what's the difference? So why we want to create HTML presentations as well? The HTML presentations, each slide is a unique HTML document and you can use through your web browser. So I believe everyone here have a web browser inside of your machine. So inside of your computer, even the windows already have the internet explorer uh, already built in into the, your machines. I'm not sure with Mac how it works, uh, but I know that uh, pretty much if you want to access any site, for example, Google, you have to have a web browser. So everyone who can create an HTML presentation can easily generate uh, the, the output and already have the software to show for the others your, your document, your content. And the HTML presentation can include also interactive charts, maps, and even more, more images and yeah, I can keep saying a lot of a long list here. Uh, and the good thing that is we don't want, we don't need, uh, sorry, we don't need an external software. For example, Microsoft PowerPoint and create an account to use it. Uh, since we can easily switch slides uh, between slides inside HTML presentation, we don't need to actually have the, the Microsoft PowerPoint. I always have the pros and cons. Uh, Microsoft PowerPoint, you can also uh, insert a little bit more of, uh, for example, um, you can draw, you can insert more transitions and you can have a little bit more of design in your PowerPoint, in your slides, but HTML can be a good uh, way to solve this issue if you don't have an account and you don't want to pay to use the software, all right? So uh, this is pretty much the end, I'm gonna, just give you a spoiler of what we're gonna do. This is the how the HTML file looks like in the end, the report, all right? This is how the PDF file looks like in the end. So you can see the changes. The HTML file can be, uh, you can put a theme on it so you can change it how it looks like. For example, this is the automatic theme that is built inside of our, but you can search for other themes that you can put it on and how the, the fonts, the size of the font as well, all can change here. And the PDF file, that's not possible. It, this font, it's already set up. You cannot change it. And it's gonna, this is how it looks like. And also the word file. So in, you can also create different themes for it. All right. Here, we also gonna, I'm gonna show you how to create section headings. Uh, sleep into document sections, for example, create tab sections when you're doing uh, HTML reports, formatting tasks uh, using bold, italican, and also putting functions on it, and bullet and list using tab and also uh, the other things that we can put a number on it. All right. So right now, uh, that's pretty much every slide that I have. So let's go and jump into what we want to learn here, which is our, our studio, right? So right now, uh, this is my console and I'm gonna do a very quick and simple thing, which is go here to new file and create uh, our Markdown, right? So as I mentioned, you can put a title here. I'm gonna use, uh, put the title R workshop. 
create a great report. All right. Uh, I'm going to let the HTML, we can easily change that. And the author, it's already set up my name because not my first time creating this report. All right. So I'm going to click OK. Perfect. So this is pretty much all uh, what, when you set up R, this is why you want to see first. So you have your title, your author, your date, and your output. As I uh, already set up HTML, I'm going to leave, leave like this first, all right? But you can easily change it as well, all right? So this is the header. This is what a code chunk looks like. This is the header, this is the, the header, which is a different thing inside of the, this structure of R. If this header means a different thing, which is when you use hashtags, we can have, have levels of header with two hashtags is different when we put three hashtags, for example, all right? Uh, but let's just focus, for example, I'm gonna press Control Shift and here, and I'm gonna delete all of this content and just let, let the first count chunk, all right? Uh, the first con chunk is very important because with this first con chunk, uh, we can set up all the next code chunks that we're gonna uh, we wanna write in this in this uh, R Markdown file. So, uh, for example, here if we press this little engine button here, we can see that we have the output to show code and output. For this purpose of this presentation, we don't want that. We just want to show the output. So we can see that the echo here is already changed to false. So we don't wanna show any type of warnings and message in our report as well. So we can click one and two and warning is false and no message as well. So no messages. So we only have the output echo false, message message equals false and warning warnings equal false. Obviously I could write that, but I think it's easier for you to understand how this engine button works as well. All right. So here I'm also going to start to give you a sense of what you can actually uh, create with the headers. So when you type two hashtags, I'm going to try to be as simple and, and quick as I can. So please pay att attention to me. Uh, and if I'm going too fast, please let me know. Uh, so I'm going to just type this uh, header here as first or chunk. All right. So as you can see, when I'm typing, it's already changed here. So you can see that the R workshop, the title is the first hashtag and above him, it's a little space between those two. Actually, it's the first con chunk with two hashtags. And inside of it, I have the con chunk one, which is set up, all right? So if, for example, I want to uh, put some comments on it, right? So to do that, I have to, I just type uh, outside of my code chunk and below of the, my header, some comments, for example, this is my first code chunk. Mm -hmm. All right. And I can type, for example, this is very important. Oops, very important. Find all of the codes that you will write below it. So another cool feature that's already uh, already set up in our Markdown is the difference things that, that we can change the uh, this how the, the writing thing here, it looks like, for example, I can put some bold, uh, uh, bold thing in this line. And then I just type two asterisks here before and after. And you can see that it changed for uh, a light green color here. And I also can put, for example, uh, italic version here. So I can put, for example, here in very important, I'm just, I'm gonna type one before and one after and change it to a solid green, all right? So this one type of things that we can uh, put it on. 
our R markdown. But uh, let's just start to actually uh, create our report here. Let's, I already mentioned how to, for example, put the bold and italic version here, uh, create some headers. And I mentioned how to change the first code chunk and how this is important. So for us to start to create the report, I'm gonna give some more lines here. And here we're gonna pretty much start to import our libraries. So with two hashtags, I'm gonna create another um, header we call importing libraries, all right? And I'm gonna press Control Alt I to create the R code chunk. If you have a Mac, it's Command Alt I just for you to remember. So we first need to upload the libraries, uh, our package. I'm gonna put some packages here that we're gonna use. I'm gonna. Oh, and it's very important to name your code chunk. This is a very good thing to do uh, because. For example, if someone else is going to uh, read your code uh, to see the logical thing about how it created its chunk code, uh, each step that you follow when you're creating is very important to name it. And also, you're going to see in the end that we're going to have a lot of code chunks. And if you just uh, don't have any, no, any name for it, you're going to be lost because you don't, you don't want to have a sense from each uh, code chunk is inside of each header. So you're not gonna be able to actually understand what you did when you just are seeing later your code, all right? So for here, I'm gonna uh, put just import, importing packages, all right? Just that. And if you don't actually uh, know uh, pretty much a lot of things about R, if you don't have this, packets already installed in your machine, you can use this function install packets and put it between um, these quotes here. You can put, for example, ggplot2. I'm not gonna run it because I already have it set it settled in my machine, but if you don't, please uh, type this first, all right? I'm just gonna call the, the libraries. So the first one library that I'm gonna use it is ggplot2, all right? And the other one, the other library that I'm gonna use is the deeply version, all right? And to run the code, it's very simple and easy. You just press this button here, all right? So that's the thing that we put the, the warning and message as false because uh, R just gave they gave us this warning that the following objects are masked from back to stats. So we don't want to show this in our output. So we, I'm going to just uh, collapse this one. And it's also not going to be shown when we have our report in the end. All right. Great. So first thing, we already have our code chunk and our, our lab, library set up in our machine. That's awesome. So I'm gonna, for each one of the things that I'm gonna mention, it's gonna be great if you start to typing at the comments. So I'm gonna, I'll just put uh, something here like, please, please, your comments here. So, uh, Everything that I'm explaining uh, in, in the middle of the header in the code chunks, please put the comments that you find relevant for you, all right? I'm gonna, not gonna uh, write it all because of the limited time that we have, all right? Uh, perfect. So we already import the, the libraries. So what we're gonna start doing, it is the data explanation, exploration, sorry. So with three headers, uh, uh, I think we can have two headers as well. Just let me see one thing. So I'm gonna start with three headers here, importing libraries, three headers here as well. And I'm gonna explain how, why we, we are doing this in the end. Um, so first thing we're gonna start to do the data, data exploration for our code, all right? So, and you can ask me, but Mateus, 
why we're going to uh, focus on data exploration here in this workshop? Well, because the data exploration allows us to understand the data set, make it e easier to navigate it later. And the better, as the analysts know what the, what the data looks like, and they are working, the better the analysis will be. So for example, if we are working in a data set and we don't know that we have missing values, we don't know that we have outliers. If we just start to uh, run it and trying to get some information from this data, uh, we can have some very strange numbers in the end. So it's very good to have a sense of what we get. And the data explanation can lead to a feature engineering ne right next to it, uh, after it, sorry. So it's very important to not jump to this step because with this step specifically, we can see, for example, correlations. We can plot some graphs and to understand our data set and how it looks like, all right? And so for the data exploration, we need obviously our data set, right? So within, with four hashtags, you're gonna type data, data frame. And I'm gonna create a code chunk, control alt i, name the code chunk. I'm gonna do this a lot of times. It's because it's very important. I'm not repeating myself because I don't have anything to say. It is because I, I really want to all of you to understand the importances of it. So I'm gonna just name as data frame. All right. Uh, so the data frame that we're gonna use first, we're gonna assign it to the variable df and the assigning vector of R, and we're gonna use the library empty cars. Since we have, we don't have to type empty cars every time in the DF, it's very close in our keyboard. So it's very uh, convenient for us. So let's have a sense of what the data set looks like. For this, we're gonna use the function head and we're gonna assign the DF, which is empty cars, the building function. And also let's see the tail, which is the less rows from this DF this data frame. All right, so let's run this code chunk. Perfect, so the first one, it is the header. So we can see that we have uh, 11 columns here. I'm not, it's not showing it out. We can also click this button here and we can see all of the table. It's a better view from my perspective. But you can also ask, for example, but Mateus, I, I'm not sure what MPG means, what steel means, this HP means. So for this, you can put a question mark, question mark in empty cars. And you're gonna see here, I'm gonna try to make it bigger, all right? The description of this data set. So the description is, the data was extracted from 1974 from Motor Trend US magazines. And you have the comp comprised your consumption of 10 aspects of automobile design and performance for 32 automobiles. All right. And we have what is very interesting for us. So the data frame have 32 observations and 11 numeric variables. All right. So pretty much 32 rows and 11 columns. All right. So the MPG, it is miles per gallon. Seal is this number of cylinders and the displacement is this and HP cross horsepower and so on and so forth. We can keep here all day long, all right? Uh, but first, since we have some actual code, I'm gonna ask you to knit this file just for you to see how it looks like. So if you just press the knit button, you also can press Control Shift K Let's use this version, Control Shift K. And as I don't have any, uh, I, I didn't save it yet. I'm just gonna save as R workshop dot RMD. And then I'm gonna save it. It's needed. Perfect, you see? In less than three seconds, we already have our file here. And you see that we don't have a code. And the data frame is also, it's already set up here and we can see. And you also can see the bullet and the italic that we set up in the, your first code chunk, all right? So this is just for to have a sense 
of the HTML version. We have a lot of other code chunks to create. So let's continue. I'm gonna collapse this and I'm gonna, now I'm gonna actually start to do what we want to, which is the data exploration, all right? So let's create four errors, hashtags here, and we're gonna create the hashtag name functions for to explore our data frame. All right. And inside of this code chunk, so I have four hashtags here. So I'm gonna start to adding five, three, four, five header. Uh, I'm gonna start to have a sense of the summary of statistics uh, depending on the class of this data set. So first I'm gonna just name the header as summary. I'm gonna create the the code chunk with control alt i or command alt i name my code chunk as summary don't forget these are comments here all right i'm just gonna copy and paste in each one where you don't forget and let's have a sense of the summary of this df all right the data frame Oh, you can be overwhelming of all of those numbers, I guess, right? So I'm gonna spend a little bit of time here explain all of these numbers that we have, but I already can say that's very important thing for you to see it, all right? So for each column that we have on this data set, as I mentioned, NPG, CLD, PHP, thread, WT, we have the minimum, the first quartile, the median, the mean, the third quartile, and the max. So the thing that is very important here, the third quartile and the max. For example, I want to give you a, a, a you guys to pay attention in this column here, the HP column. <coughs> Sorry, the third column, the this HP column, it's the third quartile is it is 180 and the max value it is. 335. You can ask me, uh, so, but why this is important? So if you have a sense of statistics, you know that everything which is pretty much way farther from the third quartile from your data set can easily be an outlier, right? So, and we don't want outliers in our data set because outliers can lead us to wrong uh, conclusions in the end. So right now, um, we're gonna actually see this specifically uh, what this max of 335 means. We're gonna slice the, this HP uh, column and to have a sense of what is it. And we also can have a sense of others one. So I'm gonna do for the HP column and you can see the other columns here as well. So you can also see that, oh, that's a lot of work. Yes, it is. The, the work of the data scientist of the data analyst is not quick and it's not easy. You have to pay attention to each detail. That's why they get paid so well, right? So here you have the HP and the mean and the max. Here we have a range. So you can see the difference between the horsepower here, right? The gross, gross horsepower. It's the range is gigantic. So we really wanna see that, okay? Uh, all right, so we have the summary here with five hashtags. We're gonna also uh, start to see a function called a table with five hashtags. So leave your comments, please don't forget. Let's just name this code chain as table. All right, and what does this function table means? Table means it is the number of observations per level for factor vector. Wow, that's a lot of words. What does that mean? All right, let's see. The table function, right? And we, we have our data set DF. If we slice, to slice you, here, we're gonna use the dollar sign and we have a sense of all the observations that we have. Uh, sorry, the numeric variables that we have. So here I'm gonna slice the HP and let's see what is the output for it. So the table pretty much gonna say 
how many of uh, how many observations we have for each unique value of this column. So we can see that the highest observation that we have has three numbers. So the 180, 175, 110. And we can see that when it goes beyond, we have just one observation, for example, for the 335, which is a not a very good thing because we, if we just have one observation uh, or a little bit more above the third, quart third quart quartile, is that can mean that we have outliers in our data set, all right? But we don't have this conclusion yet. We can also see the table, for example, using the F, slicing the cylinders, all right? And we're gonna have two outputs here. And we can see that the cylinders, the number of the cylinders for those cars, we have the highest is with eight cylinders, and uh, it has the, the less observations with the six and the four. So I guess uh, for this specific data frame, people really like V8 cars, fast ones, right? So that's why uh, this 335 is not the number that can or cannot be an outlier. Let's take a look at it, all right? Uh, all right, so we have the function to explore our data set, all right? And let's have also have functions uh, to better understand your data frame, right? To have, for example, uh, to filter, to see the specific information that we wanna achieve. So since the function have four headers, I'm gonna copy this one here. And instead of explore, you're gonna type understand our data frame, all right? And to understand our data frame, we're gonna use the function filter. And with four hashtags, five, sorry, hashtags, I'm gonna use future, all right? And leave your comments, oops. Leave your comments here. Oh my God, wait. Mess, now, yeah, leave comments. Control Alt I, create a cool chunk. Let's go and put filter here. And what we want to filter, we actually want to see this HP equals to 335 to see if it's actually an outlier or not, right? So we're going to first use the function, which means the header of this data set, all right? And we can put the filter function, filter function to it. And first, we can see that they are already, already telling us something. So we have first to put the data set. So the data set that we, we are using is DF, right? And what we want to filter? We want to filter HP equals to 335. Let's try to run this code, right? So because that, that's one thing that I think that pretty much all of you are going to try going to do if we use the filter function filter function, HP equals to 335. When you run it, you get an error. Why? And that's a very good thing that you actually read the error that they are showed to you, all right? So have the problem with filter. Uh -huh. The input, one is named. They usually means that you have used one equal instead of two equals. Did you mean HP equals equals to 335? So read the error that you're receiving. Let's put two and see if it works. See, perfect. We already have our, our, our data frame filter, all right? So we can see that we have a car named Maserati Bora. So they have eight cylinders with 335 horsepower. So I truly believe that is a very fast car, right? So to do that, I think we can, Simple if insert an image here. So we can put image. All right. So to do that, you can go here. I'm gonna search for this car. And oops, I don't wanna buy it. Sorry. Go to images. 
and we can select, for example, this image here, right? A very beautiful image. And we can copy the link. I'm also put it, gonna put it on the chat if you wanna put it in your as well. One second. Uh, co copy the link. This is in Portuguese. All right, guys. So let's copy. I'm gonna put here. All right. So going back here to insert an image, we can easily put this thing here. And you can put first, for example, uh, the description of the image, we see Maserati Flora and the HTTP um, image of it, all right? So we already have, I just let me check one thing. I think it's, it is wrong in this first, And this is like this. Yeah, that's perfect. All right. So let's need this file to see. So we can press Control Shift K and see the image of it. So we have all of this report. We have our table. We have the Maserati Bora and the image of this car. It's already already set up here in our report, right? Very, very interesting feature. I really like that as well. Okay, so let's start that we already have a sense of this car, now <laughs> of this data frame, and we already have seen the car. So let's try and see a little bit of more things. Let's tr actually trying to see, uh, to understand our data set, let's try to find some correlation of it. So with five hashtags, I'm gonna type correlation and leave your comments here. I'm gonna insert control alt i. I'm gonna just type or or correlation. And for this specific thing, uh, I'm gonna actually use uh, another file which contains all of my uh, the code that I put it here. So just give me one second, please. I'm gonna open the file. And I'm gonna also, it's pretty much all that we have done here. So I'm gonna copy this and paste it here. And I'm also gonna put it on the chat for you. And as I mentioned, this specific workshop is for you to have a sense of what is possible to do with R. So I'm not gonna pretty much start to tell you all of these codes of line here. Uh, we have here at CPP our DWV, DWV certificate program that you can actually uh, be there and pay to learn all of this that we're gonna show you how to. But right now we are just trying to actually create the report. So if we run this code chunk, uh, you can see that because here it's, I don't have a good scale of it. Let's run it again. My screen is not so big, all right? So we can pre have a, a little a better sense of it. So we, we here, for example, can see some positive and negative correlations of it, right? So to, to see it is, if it is positive or negative, we can see the correlation scale here. So if it has a very strong correlation, positive correlation, we have one with a solid red. And if it has very negative correlation, we can see a very strong blue, which leads to minus one, right? So here, for example, we can see that one of the highest negative correlations that we have it's between WT and MPT. And one of the, the highest positive ones that we have, it is between WT and DISP, all right? So that's a very interesting thing that we have here. So let's plot those, those correlations, right? 
Okay, so let's include some plots. So with five tags, let's create the header, including plots. Don't forget to leave the comments here. Control Alt I. We first gonna start with the oh so before that let's put some extra header one two three four five six let's start with the negative relation let's just start for our sense negative and I'm also gonna copy here put it in the chat the negative correlation Again, I'm not gonna explain this, but you can understand if you participate in the DWV program, please search in your, in our CPP website. All right, we can see that we have a plot with a trend line. It's a very strong negative relationship between MPG and WT. And for us just to understand the MPG, it is the miles per gallon and the WT, it is the weight. So if we have high miles per gallon and um, we have like a very high, uh, low weight for this specific car as well which is makes sense like you have a very uh, you know very high weight cars the miles per gallon that they can uh, they can actually run it's very uh, very small a very small amount right so here we have negative relationships and with six headers, we can have positive relationships. All right, don't forget to leave your comments. Alt I, I'm just gonna type positive for this code chunk. All right, I'm gonna grab my positive correlation and put it on the chat as well. You can type it with me. Once you run it, you're gonna see the pos positive correlation between the weight and the displacement of the car. If you understand a little bit of cars, we can actually get, give a sense of this is very true. The highest the weight, the highest the displacement of the car. Um, so you, you actually can see the trend line showing us that that is very true, all right? So that's pretty much uh, all of the report that we, can and uh, that I want to show you, but I also want to show some more interesting things about the report. So let's first just need all of this code that we wrote. So Control Shift K, or press the need button, as you wish. Because we have plot, we have image, going to take a little bit longer. All right. So here we have our title, our headers, our subheaders, just the code, all right? We have also the image here. We have the image that we get from internet and the other image, which is the plot of the correlations. We have the embedded plots from the negative correlation and the positive correlation as well, right? But you can see that I don't pretty much like how it looks like right now we can change it, right? So how we do that, right? We can say, can come here on the output in the HTML, we can press enter, one tab, and we can start to typing a little bit more information. So for example, if you want a table of contents, TOC, we can put it as true, right? If we, for example, want to the, the pages to be printed, for example, we can put TF underline print. And we also gonna put page. And for the theme, for this specific one, as I mentioned, we can set up some themes. We can use one that I like, which is United. But you can also change the theme, right? So let's press the input button again.
Trying to think a little bit. Oh, you see? Very quick, simple, easy to change how your HTML reports looks like. You can have a very different style of the font. We, we have here as well our table of content. You can go right straight to data exploration by one click and see. And we also can see how it is, looks like very different right now. We can see our image as well. Everything looks very more attractive in the eyes. Let's put it in this way. All right. Uh, but let's say that right now we don't want to have this HTML presentation. You want to have, for example, uh, PDF, right? So how you do that? So to create a PDF, it's very simple and easy. If you want to do that, for example, using the need button, you can click here, needs to PDF. And right now we're gonna see a very interesting thing, right? So our Markdown uh, is trying to knit this file to a PDF file and he cannot do it. So what is the reason that we are receiving this error? One thing that we have done to, to actually get is this image here, this Maserati Bora image, it is that we get this image from internet, right? But to a PDF file, he can, he's not HTML file. He cannot go into the web browser and search for the image. Right now, this is really trying to do that. So he cannot do it because PDF, he must search the image inside of your computer. The image must have to be inside of your direct directory that you, you, are, you are working here in R. So I'm gonna just stop it because I know he cannot do it, all right? And I'm gonna delete this image for the PDF file. But as I mentioned, you can do it. You just have to uh, do it in a different way. You have to put this, this image, download it, and put in your work direct, work directory and set the path for the image right here. So instead of the HTTP, you put the path of your image, right? I'm gonna just delete it just in case because I want to show how a PDF looks like. All right, so let's try to meet again. Perfect, you see, very simple and easy. All right, so we have our table of contents here. So right now we just have one uh, because uh, I put it in this way to change the table of contents. Let me put one second, please. I'm going to show you higher. As I mentioned, you cannot have. All oh, right, now it's, it's way better. For example, here you cannot change how the PDF looks like. This is the setup of R. So we have the first cone chunk here, have the style of it, have the summary, the table, the correlations. You also can put the plots as well in your PDFs. There's no, no problem. But with images, you have to do something different. This uh, extension that pops up, this is tiny text. This is why we must have installed in your R the tiny text. All right. So I can delete this. I'm also gonna need as a Word document. It's already show it to me. So we have our code chunk here, have our table of contents, our code chunk, our library, our plots as well. You see that the image is not very good here. Each one of those reports have those limitations. It's gonna depend of the end user, what you wanna achieve in the end for each purpose, all right? So, I'm also gonna uh, show you a very interesting feature, which is to create tablet sections. So inside of your code, code chunk, I'm gonna get my, my, my tablet section here, just in case to be quicker because we are running out of time. I'm also gonna put it on the chat. 
you're going to type it on your first code chunk, not in each one of them, all right? And once you need it in HTML, you're going to see that we have tabs inside of your HTML page, right? So you can, for example, separate libraries from data, data exploration, have a lot of tabs here as well. So that's very interesting. For example, if you are a student of data science and you get want to put a lot of, of your projects here inside of uh, this HTML file, you can name it, each one of them, and put it in one tab. So when the hiring managers are seeing your projects, you can easily show to them each one in tabs. And also you're gonna show that you can create HTML reports uh, using R, not using HTML. And you can pull a lot of different languages here. R, Bash, D3, Python, SQL, Stun. So pretty much R, Python, and SQL are the main three languages that I think every data scientist must have. Uh, and R is a very, very good one as well. Uh, so, and I'm also gonna only show you a little, just one more thing uh, for, for us to wrap up this presentation, which is the slides presentations. So with the slide presentation, uh, we're gonna go here in the HTML document and we're gonna put just one thing, which is sliding. Uh, one, one second. Right here, uh, I guess I'm gonna just control X. If you lost it, there's no problem. Just put slidey presentation. Let's see if it's gonna work. Try to need. Here, we have our slide presentation. So as I mentioned, we can also create the slides with R, right? So this is our first slide, and this is our second slide with all of our code here. And we can see here below, we have two slides. This is the slidey version, and I'm also gonna show you the other version, which is IO slides presentation. And to need that, is a different thing, right? So it has a, has a different look, depends on what you like the most, you can use it. And we also can see all of those slides here as well, right? So each one has a different thing. So I pretty much uh, already show you this HTML, PDF, Word, and a spoiler, a spoiler for our next presentation, which is the slides presentation, all right? So you have your first report. So you don't stop, keep working on that. Also put your project here, create uh, a HTML report using R, show the hiring manager that you know how to do it. And I, I believe it's a very interesting and cool feature that you cannot stand in an Excel from yourself, right? So let's just go back to the presentation. We already done all of this. So just to recap the learning outcomes. So I show you how to describe the R Markdown structure to, I also show how to explain the capabilities and the benefits of using R Markdown, compare and contrast creating PDF and HTML reports. I show you how quick and easy you can switch on both of those reports. I also create the output header appropriate for the desired output file. So if you want to have Word, if you want to have out, uh, HTML, or PDF, or even slides presentation. We just want to change the output right there in the header, right? And I also explained the R Markdown code structure, and we created together a report and the desired file format that we wanted in um, one specific situation, for example, PDF, Word, or HTML using R Markdown, all right? So that's pretty much uh, all that I want to show you. So thank you so much.
to be with me all of this uh, almost an hour here with me. Uh, you can connect me using the LinkedIn. Please follow M -M 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 -A -M -I, social media and also CC DMI social media. We have a lot of other workshops that we are planning. We have the DWV certificate program as well. So a lot of content that you can study from uh, with us. And we put a lot of work in our effort to do our best here. So thank you so much once again. And that's it.